so Nana was a lovely, lovely lady who was born, I think she was born on the farm, or maybe not quite, but a grass kill. So that was a farm in between Sulby and Walkup. So she really was in the middle of nowhere and spent all of her life until she retired there. And her husband was a farm worker on the farm who she met and had his children. <laughs> so I don't know what, I can't imagine, but she, yeah, she had 85 years in the one chapel at Bleatan and her first 50 years in the farm, she didn't have any electricity because in 1966, they got electric from Rutter Falls. She's a lovely little waterfall nearby. My sister switched the switch of electric on at her farmhouse. So Nana, as you're saying, it must be quite hard to comprehend. You had 50 years without electric. She would milk the cows by hand and then she'd make the milk into butter and cheese and take it to market on horseback and cart once a week. And she must, they had a, they had a milk stand, so they'll have taken the milk up to the milk stand in those nice old churns every day. And then she'd sit by candlelight mending the granddad's woolen socks. She'd knit socks furiously with like, is it four needles, I think, knitting away. <laughs> and then she would mend his socks every night and it would all be by candlelight. Dad used to take um, a bedpan to bed full of coal from the fire, he said. Fill this bedpan up with the coals, stick it under the bed, and he'd have a candle to carry up to bed. I think all these kids doing this, what a fire hazard nowadays, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, she is very tough. All of her friends were tough. One of her friends died at 100. And I think she had a heart attack and she was carrying her coal for the fire up outside steps to her fire and that's what she'd done every day of her life, right up to 100 years old. And I was thinking, I'm impressed at that, but Nana would that point be in her 80s. And she was still, she had a coal fire right up until she went into the care home. She'd sit with her feet on the coal fire and burn her slippers. <laughs> <laughs> Nana had a car and I don't know what it was, but any man I talk to will know straight away, but it was, she was 16 and there's a lovely photo of her and her, her parents with the mum with a fox fur around her neck, so I think they might have been quite well to do. And I think she was the first person in Westbrook, I was told, to have a car at 16. Wow. She had one lesson in the garage to drive it, and mm -hmm. she took it from the garage home, all the way home in first. <laughs> I presume she learned as she went on. And um, she was a big chapel person and she would go around taking the bride to the weddings in her car and then she would sing, she had a beautiful singing voice, so she would sing at the weddings and she would do the flowers at the weddings as well. So it was quite something, isn't it? And since so she, she was kind of, I often felt with my grandmother, she was an intelligent lady who never got a chance to spread her wings because she stayed in the farm and worked hard on the farm all her life. But she did fly out, her cousins had a daughter who lived in Jersey and she flew to Jersey at 85, the first time she'd been on an aeroplane, which I think is quite impressive going. Mm. And when, when Granda died, she moved into Walker, she was retired with him to Walker, but she went on, I'm probably teaching some coach holidays, but she was really good at getting up and going off on holidays and enjoying her freedom right. <laughs> when she got it. Yeah. And yeah, she just did everything. She would make marmalade and all her own home grown. She grew everything from scratch and made everything from scratch. Dad was, Dad was a really picky eater. And they told me the story of Dad, her taking him to the doctors because he wouldn't eat anything and he was skinny. And um, the doctor said, if all he eats is your homemade bread, butter and jam, that's good enough for him. And that's something what he was brought up on. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, just to think of homemade bread, butter and jam, it's not bad, is it? Yeah, when I used to ask her, tell me about your life, she'd say, oh, hard, hard days. You don't want to know about that, it was hard. Oh. Which is a shame, really, because, yeah, she would get up early, she would have cows and sheep, probably, I'm not sure she had pigs, chickens and hens, all the farm animals, and then all the housework. And without any electrical aids, it's hard work. Everything's brushing and sweeping and cleaning and cooking and non-stop, isn't it? Yeah. And I said, did I say she'd have the teeth out on the kitchen table? No. <laughs> she, she said she had her teeth out. I don't know whether it was a fashion thing. My dad had his teeth out for his 21st birthday present, as you do. Wow. 
and, and I don't know when or why she had hers taken out, but she had hers, she said she had her teeth taken out, held down on the kitchen table. And she got this set of false teeth, I think they were clear, it was very pinky red, the gums. And she had that pair of false teeth all the time I knew her, right up till she died. One set of false teeth lasted her possibly 80 years. How old was she when she died? Just under 102, she's 101. I think she was a month off her 102nd birthday. And for her 100th birthday, we went in, she had a little party in the village. All the school children came and sang happy birthday to her. It was really nice. And she said, I don't know what these kids are doing, making a fuss. I said, they've never met anyone as old as you, Nana. <laughs> <laughs> she just laughed. But, you know, we were all worn out at the end of that day because it's a long day with, there'd be about 100 people in the village hall coming and going all day long. She got home, she sat down and she said, right, let's have a look at my cards. And <laughs> she's bright for her age. She was still living at home then, on her own. She shows you. Yeah. Work, work hard. Well, yeah, she would eat. A f she would have fried bacon and eggs and, and fried bread in full fat dripping <laughs> every day. She loved a cake. She hated fruit. She hardly ate any veg and she'd make herself steak and kidney pie and crust. For one, she would go to the bother of cooking all that for herself, right up till she was old. And she didn't know modern diets and health regimes or anything. And she, <laughs> but I think she had a fairly stress-free life and content. And she didn't drink or smoke, I suppose. But yeah, you'd have thought she'd have high cholesterol, wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, the other thing I liked about Nana was she was always big and fat and robust, and then about 80, weight just fell off her, and she went right down from size 20 to about 14, and I thought, there, you don't need to diet, it'll fall off you one day. <laughs> <laughs> she never worried about her weight, and I think that was a nice way to live.